Well, I'll tell you what, man, if you'd start, I, look, I want to dig into kind of the whole journey front to back, if you don't mind, but start, just give a little bit of intro, a little bit of background. Talk about that. Yeah. So um been with Legend Bank since beginning of the year. They brought me on pretty much right at the beginning of January. Um, and so before that, I've uh, kind of been in community banking pretty much the whole career. And I uh, had the opportunity to, at my previous organization, to just rotate around the bank and just get to learn all the different parts of the bank. And then, uh, so incredible program that I got to that I got to be a part of. And then from there, I was basically awesome. yeah, right, it's good. Yeah. I was the uh, I was previously kind of the chief of staff to the COO at uh, it was a much larger bank. And so from there, I mean, it was just a front row seat to everything from. Basically, most of corporate from a deposit ops, loan ops, IT, infosec, digital transformation, data and analytics, project management, kind of just all right there that we got to kind of help work through as well as uh, got to build out a team below me just to go and just solve problems and just and just go and and just kind of be that flexible group, per, group that just kind of goes around and just how do we make things better? How do we solve things? You said a much larger yeah. bank and hell, you guys are over a billion. Yep. That's true. That's true. Yeah, my previous, a lot of previous banks out there, they think, man, I wish I was a billion. Yeah. <laughs> That's very true. That's very true. Yeah, I think when I was, I came from, so I'm not going to a little over 15 billion right now. So a little bit of a change, I will say, going from that to you know a one billion dollar bank. But it's been, uh, it's been, it's been great. It's, uh, it's just so much more. I was talking to one of my new employees and. Yeah, I was like, how is it? Because, you know, he came from a large organization, too. He's like, man, I love it. It's so entrepreneurial, just being this small bank that just goes and can just pivot and make decisions like that, you know? And so I think, I think, I mean, there's lots of reasons why, you know, you guys are seeing small banks jump into bass. But I think that right there is an often not talk about piece of just being able to just go make decisions right there. Like our steering committee is like, we got the CEO, we got the CFO, we got the CEO right there. I'm like, all right, what are we going to do? All right, let's go with it. You know, and it's it's really cool. It's really cool. Thing over there, dude, like, I think I picked up on this first right after the Civil War, before the First World War. Yeah. <laughs> Man, there's a heck of a difference when, if you take a a, a little bank, right, a, a little bank, a, a billion dollars, let's go with a medium bank, a yeah. billion dollar bank, and, you know, got... 20 branches or whatever. And a lot of times through the either acquisitions are just historically growing that way. They're just a bunch of little private banks mushed together. Right. Yeah. And then you, you have this little tipping point. Some guys are actually, they've done it this way and they've built the infrastructure. And then some people say, okay, there's a moment in time in there where it needs to have 1 billion, 2 billion, where I've got to redo this this structure of this thing to where it's not 24 little silos here. It's one organization. When you got there, did they already kind of have that infrastructure as a no longer a $250 million bank kind of operation, a whole bunch of them? Or did they, you kind of see my question there? Yeah. Yeah. So I think um, Legend has done a great job from a cultural perspective where it very much felt like one bank. It wasn't, it wasn't just off major silos of community banks and stuff. So they had they have felt very much of a cohesive unit. And um, I will say their growth has been very intentionally methodical. It's been very, it's a balanced stage of growth where we're not just growing for growth sakes. We're growing for profitability sake. We're going for and trying to do it right and not just trying to run, but trying to actually go intentionally of how they walk. So the benefit of that is, you know, it's not like something that's doubling in size constantly where they're trying to always, you know, catch up. It was being able to lay the paving stones as they go down this path. So from just a cultural perspective, which is the huge part of it as well, um, they're pretty established. I do want to say, so on the culture theme, that was my first thing with Legend too. So we need a new word. Yeah, we'll come up with a new word. Don't worry. So this is actually before Jerry was even brought on. So to this point of kind of the, the steering committee, right? So they reached out to me wanting to talk about Bass. And so they bring the whole group and, uh, yeah, we hung out, had some beers, you know, and kind of talked through things. And it was really interesting to me. So, so we I kinda, got you hired. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate well, that. <laughs> so I started it. The question was, you know, where do you want me to start in sort of the Bass story, right? And then like start at the beginning. 
And I could tell for the first half of the conversation, they were well ahead of where I was at and what I was explaining. Right. You're like, it, but they want, no, they wanted it to be intentionally remedial. They wanted to start at the beginning and they're very methodical in their questions. Exactly. And so that grabbed me right off. And I think my favorite thing with you guys in the bank and being close to you and watching everything, that methodical concept has been at every step of everything that you guys have done. And it's really cool to watch. I mean, you guys have your shit together better than almost anybody, right? And we do a ton of this stuff, as you'd imagine. And uh, I think that methodical theme is really important. And, you know, like, I think you really nailed it there. And I want I want everybody to kind of really hear this part of what we're talking about. Racing, running, trying to catch up. Those things are not, I hate that word, so we're not going to use it. There you go. They're really bad management tactics, right? And so take your time. Don't crash the ship. It's yeah. not a race. Yeah. They're still early, early in the game on this stuff. And people that will do this the way you guys are going about it. I mean, they specifically hired you, if I've got this right. I'm not trying to tell your story, but <laughs> that was your your job description is to come in here and run this out. piece of the back, you know, build us a bath bank. Yes, right? sir. Yeah. Talk, talk about that. Yeah. So they, uh, um, one of the things that I'm, I just so appreciate uh, Jay and the leadership doing is, not only do they do those conversations with you all and Christopher from IBAT and people that kind of laid that initial foundation beforehand. So it was, you know, I guess you could say fertile ground for me to kind of go in and start, start working on. Um, but then they also recognize the need that, Hey, we need that internal champion to be able to go in and do that. And, and to be able to just honestly, just dedicate full time to just exploring this, learning more about this and, and, going and taking things back and sharing them back with the organization and what we have. So yeah, that's, that's really, that's really it. I remember um, when I first came in, I remember interviewing with them and saying, you know, this, this can't just be something that Jared's doing. This can't just be something that, you know, Jared runs off and just goes and, and is part of it. This needs to be something that is almost Jared in the back, helping the organization go through as, as, as we kind of go through it. Cause it's not, it can't just be something on an island. You know, you don't have that true lasting, scalable innovation unless it's everybody's involved, unless everybody can see that alignment and what they're trying to do. And so I think that's what's been so great. And going back to the methodical route where, don't be wrong, there's times where being more methodical causes it to go slower. It it causes it to, to you know, there's a little bit that, okay, let's go up and run. You know, I'm, I'm ready to, to go live. I'm ready to go and do these things and, and all that stuff. But it's also trying to be very intentional about it and trying to have that measured balanced growth and balanced risk perspective where we can't go too slow. We can't have, you know, paralysis analysis, but also we can't just jump straight in and like, all right, let's just sign something up and go live in 30 days. You know, it's like, no. Nope. Like 900 question. I'm trying to hold back and you're all, you're going to leave alone. <laughs> no, it's great. But uh, Hey man. So as you're going through this process and finding your best path, and what, you know, actual fintechs you want to do or how you want to, you know, what vertical channel, whatever you want to call that, that you want to really focus on. And you're learning all of these other ways to do things and deciding mm -hmm. here's our, we're going to do it this way, right? Mm -hmm. I, I, this is the question of the hour. I'm going to make a statement before my question. There's a lot of people full of shit with a microphone that need to put them down. <laughs> yes. And uh, Scaring the hell out of everybody. Yeah. And, you know, hey, there's going to be regulatory burden on bass banks. It's like, it's about time. Yeah. We've been waiting for that. It's we need thing. that guidance. Yeah. It's not a bad thing. It's a good thing. Yeah. There's not a catastrophe going on here. So the biggest thing that I hear that I would call misinformation, which is why I love people that come to BHB, you know, they're, they're trying to get the truth, man. Yeah. And I want you to tell us the truth. When you go through this path, is this a thing that's going to cost you know, tens of millions of dollars and you're going to have to have a staff of 75 people, or is this something that the technology has evolved into a, a, there's other easier ways to do this? Yeah. Absolutely. The latter, you oh. know, where it's, it is, so, it is not something. <laughs> yeah, there you go. All right. We can stop. We're good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I mean, I think, I think it was you guys that compared it to like, you know, just go build a branch. Go go build a branch, and how long is that going to take? Two, three years? How much money is that going to take? How many steps? How many people? And then on top of once you finally have your grand opening and all that, 
how many years afterwards is it going to start even at least breaking even? And so when you really compare from a like a line of business perspective, even just like a traditional line of business of like, let's open up an investment arm, let's open up a trust side, whatever. Like the fact that we went from January of me walking into Legend Bank to now we're in active due diligence with a fintech. Now, you know, we're still in the beginning stages of it. But, you know, just in those six, seven months since there, it's when you compare that to, uh, you know, like I said, opening up a branch or going through something crazy or even like your traditional, like five years ago, these major software implementations or rollouts, it's a lot different now. And, and also you're seeing a lot of good providers come into the marketplace to kind of help speed that up. Plus, frankly, I mean, the original use case for Bass is exactly like that. Plus, the original use case for Bass is you're trying, you're not, no, you're not beholden to like these legacy, you know, monolithic big three players out there and stuff, and you're trying to find your way around it, which oftentimes leads to a lot of the slowdown and stuff. So, yeah, no, it's it is not something that needs, you know, five, ten people, seventeen million dollars by any means. Honestly, it just takes grit and determination, and I will say, having a dedicated champion internally absolutely helps out. I love the. You know, two minutes ago, Jared's like, yeah, you know, sometimes it can be a little slow and, uh, and I'm like six months. Come on, man. Right. You know, I mean, I, I think, you know, having these conversations with, you know, some larger institutions, you know, you look at a $10 billion bank. And I mean, they're 18 months into exploring whether they're going to explore. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And so I think not to use the culture word again, but right. You can get in your own way. And even worse, I think to your point the listening to too many outside forces, especially with all the misinformation. And I mean, look, we all know people that sell advisory are going to tell you how hard it is and why you need them. Everybody's an expert. Exactly. And so there's a lot of, you know, stuff there that's a little wonky, but when you look at it as, what do you think, Jared? Probably legend took maybe the previous six months or so before you came on. To kind of slow walk, ask around, be again methodical before making a decision, right? And then with you, I mean, you're talking about ballpark a year to where you're you're really in the show now, right? I mean, yeah. that was that's pretty awesome. I think it's I think it's actually really and fast. If that's if that's the story to your point of like, oh, it's terribly slow. Yeah, and that's that's really that long to figure out to change your online vendor. Yeah, you know? I mean, God, but right? often I change my oil, man, but yeah. once a year. Yeah, I know. Uh, <laughs> Hey man, a couple of, I won't beat you to death. I just got 9 million of these. So we're going to go from, eventually I'm going to stop the fastball and hit your ass with a curve. Yo, you, know? He, you know why he's telling you that? Because the first bit. one's going to be a curveball. Yeah. So I yeah. can confirm. Yeah, he knows me. Yeah. So <laughs> in this process, there's a couple of little things that I want to know. So are there like one or two, Not I know you've got a hundred, but I mean, are there one or two major takeaways of, man, I wouldn't do this, even though I see a lot of people doing it, but this is a better way. Or the part two of that question is, you know, I get this question a lot from bankers. So the, the one that kills me is how do I find the FinTech, which I shouldn't, didn't mean to mock anybody out there. <laughs> you took that the wrong way, but it's kind of like, I tell people it's like finding mosquitoes at the beach. Yeah. Once you raise your hand, they'll be there. Yeah. yeah. I'm actually, actually, when we get off this call, I've got two people looking to, they're already just, fintech with a bass bank but they've outgrown the bank and they want to get to a little bit bigger yeah. and uh, they wanted me to talk to you about that so there you go there's two if, there's not <laughs> there's not a big deficiency in that department yeah. but the complexity as you move into let's say over a couple of years i want to really stretch this out like pretend that i just said 10 years and 10 fintech grants i didn't but we don't want to do 10 in one year Good call. Good call. So as you go through this stuff, if you go into, you know, aerophysics and oil and gas and chemicals, and, yeah, yeah, and you go in <laughs> nine million different directions, it really makes it difficult on your own internal team. Is that a true statement? Yeah, no, absolutely. The more that you can align to what your bank already knows, if you want to use like the fancy consulting term, the core competencies, the more you can align to just the stuff that you know and that you can get your hands around and that like, hey, we got this stuff down really well, just the better off it's going to be because, you know, that's where you can really get in trouble when you start getting into stuff that you just know nothing about because you're supposed to monitor, you're supposed to be that oversight, you're supposed to, you're supposed to be the regulator basically for the fintech almost in a way, you know? And so, 
the more that you can't get your hands around it, then it's like, all right, then that sets you up for, you know. Man, I'm going to so well throw a yellow flag right yes. there and just say yes. what he just said was don't treat fintech brands like a customer, like a damn customer. Right. They're not your business customers. Right. They're like, although they look very similar. But you know, right? like the neighbor kid that comes over when he's 13, it's like, where's my wallet? Yeah. You know, you got to watch yourself a little bit. Yeah. Uh, don't give them 100%. You got to realize that a lot of these, they're, this is a competitive advantage for them and part of their core ethos of their business mm -hmm. to be differentiated. And they're trying to differentiate from what are the rules. What's that stat you have about <laughs> the number yes. of, uh, you know, bass banks that are commercial oriented? Yeah. Already? So of, of the commercial banks and community banking, we are just rounding over 15% that are in the bath space. And I'd say if you looked at our watch list of people that are dabbling and getting in there, probably north of 20% of the commercial banks. So here's what's funny. The watch list, yeah. yeah, if you included that. Jared, something I told him the other day is we're getting close to the end of that early adopter cycle, right? And going into a little more mainstream, you know? And so I think that's something that's interesting to kind of see if the, yeah. the commercial folks and thinking about commercial customers, you can get it, right? It's not... This isn't some crazy theme. This is probably the next evolution of commercial banking. Which is my next question. Okay. Is now, you know, I'm going to go back to 2008, Cross River, Brian Unruh, MBKC. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're talking about the OGs of this stuff, right? Mm -hmm. Or I'm looking at financial statements and I'm like, what the hell are these guys doing? Right. right? Yeah. I'm on the phone and figure it out. And I'm like, we didn't have a word for bass back then. Yeah. Yeah. You know, we, just, we call them tech banks. Yeah. We now, did. I admit it. If you look yeah. at where we are on the regulatory front, which I think is far further than we were even a year ago, everybody's got at least an idea of what the rules are. I think you said it's perfect of we need guidance. Yeah. That's so huge. Well, they yeah. just pat you on the butt and send you out in a minefield and then come back and go, here's some consent order. Yeah. And everybody goes, look, you got consent. I'm not going to tell you what to do. But <laughs> what is like? yeah. yeah. It's not the end of the world, but would you say that this is, I mean, I can tell everybody right now, we are not. At the end zone we're not even I, you know what's that churchill line this isn't the end it isn't the beginning but maybe it's the beginning of the end yeah no end of the beginning sorry the beginning of the end <laughs> okay so point being to all this our jokes aside do you feel like from the regulatory stance from everything else that this is the beginning of the maturity is that fair yeah i think so and and to kind of you know answer it a different way it's also not going away in the sense where, you know, this is, I think, I mean, even even the acting uh, head of the Comptroller of Currency even said, hey, this is around to stay, so let's try and do this right. So, I mean, that's pretty telling as is. Now, that being said, I think the long term, like maybe the flavor or the way in which we experience it or the label of bass may the evolve. <laughs> you know, yeah, the, the, the rules may evolve some of those things, but gosh, in terms of like, you think about like the tenants that led to what Bass, to how it originated, like faster speed to innovate in financial services, you know, not being entirely, utterly dependent upon the big three, you know, being able to make these incredible digital experiences like that are around like a, a meaningful brand that someone wants to interact with. Those aren't going away, you know, by by any means. And so that's where, like I said, I think it's the the rules may slightly change because right now there was there was no rules, and then we start to have a box that's kind of being defined of what the edge is and stuff. So no, I don't I don't think I don't think it's going away. And yeah, I think we may have gone from like the bleeding edge to now starting to kind of be the leading edge, and so and then that's already starting to kind of be because there's there was that full second wave of people, and I think I would include us in there that. We saw the people on the bleeding edge who some did really well and some stepped on the landmines, you know, and then we're kind of like sitting back like, all right, there's a landmine there, there, there. All right, let's go this way, you know, and that's that's what we're trying to do and stuff. Actually, but, like you owe them a debt of gratitude because they got the consent orders. They stepped in the right. minefield. Yeah. Yeah, I don't feel like this is a this isn't an off the side of the desk. This isn't a business line or an opportunity. This is most likely a staple. We're not going to need that damn ATM and online <laughs> banking or any of that yeah. stuff. It's yeah. a website. There you go. Yeah, it's yeah. one of those. I do, you, do you agree with all that? Yeah, absolutely. It's um, I th I think it's it is something that I don't think that we can that community bank specifically can just bury their heads in the sand and say, I don't want to talk about it. I don't want to hear about it, you know, and pretend it doesn't exist. 
Now, also, that being said, I think there's, you know, some people don't view bass as negative, like, oh, you're letting the fox in the hen house and stuff. And it's like, I disagree with that because what's the opposite? The opposite is not doing anything and then letting, letting like, if it's a spectrum, letting fintech, it's like a tug of war, letting them just go way ahead. And so this is a way to be able to do that. And the other thing I was reflecting on as well is like, and correct me if I'm wrong, but in my understanding, there's nothing that a fintech is doing that a bank can't do That's but right. there are that things that a bank is doing that a fintech cannot do because yeah. of the charter because of all that stuff and so shifting that mindset from not from from it's us versus them it's just like these clear delineations to how do you pivot your mindset to think like them and, and take learnings from them there's a reason why they've been so successful there's a reason why they've been doing stuff and so I think just fully standing off and not even exploring it and not even talking about it, not even just getting your hands on resources to learn more about, okay, how would I even start if I wanted to go down that path? I think that's a mistake. I'm not saying every bank is going to be right. a mass bank, but I mean, I think that's the current situation. Right? This is exactly, I'm so glad you said that because this is exactly the moment where I'm like, but be careful who you ask, right? Yeah. Because uh, everybody has an opinion now. Everybody's an expert because they, they Everybody's figured out, hey, I can go I, talk to a board and they'll actually pay me to do it. <laughs> and that's why we do things for free. I'll give you a great one there. All right. So you talk about the bullshit artists, the talking heads, the dipshittery, as I like to call it. Mm -hmm. the, the narrative is broken. And so, Jared, if I just said this, if I said uh, fintechs are the biggest threat, you're going to be a dinosaur, right? Every banker's heard that a thousand you times. Must. Yeah, you must. You must. Bankers must, blank, right? right? Okay. So to this fintech threat. But then I'll turn right around 30 seconds later and talk about, well, bass, it's a bigger topic and it's not for everybody. And it's like, that's the two different I sides thought, of I the same the thing. Fence, there, man. Like, yeah. I thought you're not involved. <laughs> but it's the same, it's the same conversation. If, if yeah. you think that the fintech threat, let's say, is real, you can't turn right around and say, we shouldn't use our charters to bank them. Yeah. That's insanity, right? Yeah. You got to pick one of the two, but you can't, you can't hit me with both narratives. I'm sorry. Right. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It's like, are you going to, are you going to partner with them to, to leverage that charter and utilize this? Or are you going to commit to fighting. like tr fighting, like be your own FinTech? Well, there's, there's no reason why you can't be your own FinTech for your own charter, you know? And so absolutely. I think it's the more that there's that they can hold that dynamic between the two. That's just so key. And you know, it's not I, all or nothing. I think the first day we met, we were eating onion rings. Yeah, <laughs> I remember those. Yeah, those were good. they're good. Okay. And we were talking about that very topic that, you know, it, it is super important that you don't put your head in the sand. You mm -hmm. need to get informed about this. Every board needs to get informed about this. But where you get your information from is absolutely critical. Now that you, I mean, your bank dove into it smart enough at that point to go, we really want to do this and we're going to bring you in as a specialist and then fully endorse your behavior and your whole learning process of examining everything. I'm I'm gonna just I I think I mentioned this that day we were eating onion rings. I said a year from now, I hope that you can control the loyalty to the bank that brought you here <laughs> because you are going to be one of those valued commodities in banking. That's true. Because you now see all the dumb shit, all the misinformation, all of the mistakes oh, I, that could be made I can and then also it. the smartest path to victory and the cheapest most compliant way yeah. and i scream this to everybody this is a money maker y'all this is this is the greatest hope that community banking has had I agree. in my lifetime and i've watched my buddy josh rowland talks about legacy cores and technology and he says you know we come up with atms we come up with online banking and all that stuff works yeah you know and and now the fintech guys Think that makes come up with an idea that they can use a prepaid card or they can do a you know an early direct deposit or something and it's like they're, just they're using it. your tools right to yeah. do it with right? yeah. they can't accomplish these tasks without you which is really your whole point that i thought was brilliant that yeah. anything you can do i can do better yeah. and cheaper right yeah. so let them run with the ball let them call you names We'll get up to speed. We'll be the experts and bankers. Well, well, and Jared is, man. I've been lucky enough. You, you'd be laughing at me, but occasionally I'll have an email or a document or something that he created come through. And I'm like, can I use that? 
I know. <laughs> you know? Like, I know. Damn. It was pretty pretty good, I man. think this one's so smart. Yeah. They so, sure all quick, right? But I mean, I just wish, I mean, we get to spend a good chunk of our time playing in this arena and just, you know, hey, this is fun, man. This is what everybody wants to do. And you got an egg to your point, man. You got the 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 free reign to just learn and play in it. Like you have the coolest job in the world. Yeah. So I'm a little yeah. jealous of the man. warm up picture when he gets yeah. and the kids come over and get his autograph. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. And like I couldn't be more appreciative of legend. I mean, even just allowing the space where it's when you think about executive management giving you the grace to say, hey, the first six months. We don't expect any results. We're just we're just absorbing and digesting information and share that learning with our board. Share that learning back with us as a steering committee. That's so like that's so such a great thing that I, I just love Legend Bank for and what an incredible thing. Yeah, yeah. How did I mean, it go when you did that? <laughs> how did it go? Here? Yeah, I mean, no, I mean the, yeah. the old, like grasp what you were talking about. Or, I mean, with tough topics. I, mm. I mean, I think. I would relate it to an iceberg where just like with anything, you have to be, you have to know what's above the surface and what's below the surface, but everything, once you can relate to, Hey, here's the key things that we need to know. Here's the stuff that's beyond that. There's always going to be some technical stuff that are down below that, that aren't as relevant, but here's what we can see. Here's what's above the surface. Here's what we need to be aware of. And that, that directly is in line with everything down below. And, and it went well, it's been, it's been great. Um, I'm actually, I'm actually also super proud of our own of our steering committee and where we're at because you can also see their learnings and their their evolutions as we go through this and understanding it. And the thing is, is if I'm just holding all that stuff in my mind, then I'm not doing Legend Bank a service. I want to. I need to be coming back and educating and and stuff and sharing the learning, sharing. Hey, I'm with this vendor. Here's what I learned. Here's how this can do. Here's the ways we can solve it. Here's this path. This path. This path. This here's the pros cons for each and all that stuff and so it's been a it's been a really great great opportunity to be able to do that and and it's been so good of being able to and I'm so appreciative of them because they've also gone through this journey of helping to change that mindset where it's you know just just learning some things that when you've been in banking or you've been like in a salaried role your whole life what what's the what's a burn rate you know like how do you what's what does that mean if it's like hey you know having that philosophy that every startup is dying until it's not is that, you know, just learning those things and saying, Hey, can we make this decision now? Like, cause if we push this decision two weeks until the next committee, that, that, that's going to hurt a FinTech. That's going to kill someone, you know, to be able to do that. So just learning to kind of shift that mindset is, is such a key thing and, and learning to be quick on decisions, full transparency, full clarity so that we can, we can be a good partner, even if we don't end up going with a partner with a fintech. Um, I always tell them my goal when we're just kind of doing that initial strategic talk is I want to get you a decision as fast as possible. It could be a yes or a no. I want that clarity for you as soon as possible because I know you're working against a burn rate. I know that time is the most important commodity you have, and I don't want to drag you out and, and hurt you. And so it's been a great, great thing. Jared, that That's you fun. guys have outlined you know, specific, like, hey, we're going to focus, let's say we start with the balance sheet, and we're going to focus on non-interest income, or we're, we're focused on fee income or interchange or whatever, and then work your way backwards into what type of fintech you actually want, what you're looking for size-wise, execution-wise, where they're at in their journey. Is that kind of why you do it? Yeah, absolutely. Um, because... It, again, it's and I think if you if you think about the the and I'll see I'll explain where I'm going. If you think about the recent third party risk management guidance, yep. that gives you a frame by which you look at fintech partners, i.e., you view them as a third party. Yep. So what does that mean? So let's back this up. At the same time, that anything that you're doing with that should align with how you're already approaching your existing verticals, your existing community, your existing brand. And that includes risk appetite statement, balance sheet needs, all of the above. And so that's why you always start with that top of that strategic plan. And then you just work your way down to what does this truly mean for us? And that helps define your scope of products and services that you want to sponsor. And, and this is awesome. so perfect. Like, I mean, man, yeah, I wish I'd have said all that. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I'm embarrassed. Man. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I was trying to say. Yeah, that's what I meant to say. But there's also the fintech guy that, you know, he shows up and he goes to the banker and he talks to him and they're like, oh, they didn't want us or whatever. Don't take this so personally, Mr. Fintech guy. Right. It's, you know, I, I needed a green one 
because we're going into a green field, if I need a red one, we'll use that one tomorrow. But I don't need that one right now. It's, the, it's so situational. The banks are as differentiated the as the fintechs are, right? Yeah. And it's needs from both sides would have to fit. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. Yeah, and I think right now, because the ratios are so pro-bank, you know, number of banks jumping in bass versus number of fintechs who need a charter and stuff, by being there, you have that luxury of choosing, you know. But now, maybe three years, four years from now, you know, that 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 dynamic may not always be the same. I don't know. We'll, we'll just have to see. But right now, you do have that luxury of being able to, to set it. And, and gosh, I mean, for your first one, even second one, even for us, there's still so much learning we need to do once we go live, once we have, once we are a Bass Bank, we have a FinTech partner up and running and all that stuff that you you really can't be chasing the shiny object. You need to commit to what you say you're going to do, the products and services you're going to sponsor, because you're going to see some cool PowerPoints. You're going to see some cool, you know, some cool uh, demos and stuff, but you need to commit to what it is that you have because there's so much learning that is part of that. I mean, that's, I would say your first fintech is just as much about learning as it is trying to make some extra money. You know, we're not even for us, we're not even looking necessarily to try and, you know, make it big with the first one. If we break even on costs, awesome. We're right. excited. Yeah. You know, that's 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 a win because of that internal learning that we'll be able to have from being able to go through that experience. So that's yeah, awesome. absolutely is there, absolutely the right thought. Is there a generic type of fintech that would be kind of a good starter i mean would it be like a hsa or would it be something on you know good call. is there anything like that that you would say hey man now it's situational or yeah here's kind of an easy one yeah generally speaking in, in my opinion um the more you can focus on the deposit side and card side the in my mind it's going to be a little bit more uh aligned to what most banks know of Whenever you start, because, you know, most fintechs are going to be very digital heavy or exclusively digital, um, lending does open up a lot more regulatory compliance, I would say that, and we, you know, that you are seeing some scrutinies out there, making sure you're doing fair lending, making sure you're steering anything from predatory. That, I would just say that a, that initial hurdle is a little bit harder on that yeah. side of the balance sheet. Um but also if you, again, just going back to what your bank knows, I mean, if your bank is like, you have huge corporate accounts and you just know ACH through and through, find a, find a FinTech that just needs an ACH rail access, you know, and then that's what you do for that. So again, it's kind of finding those kind of core, core competencies as you want to call it. That all, all the right stuff. That's I, awesome. Yeah, I and love it. Legend Bank is super helpful in their community in the Texas banking community. And now you guys are being super helpful in the Bass community. Right. And I know there's lots more that we're all talking about and planning there and, so I just want to say thanks for just being thoughtful yeah. to anything that you guys jump into, uh, especially if you ever get a, a high five or a favor from anybody else, you pay it back threefold. So hey, quick question. Are you, you. What's your charter type? Are you OCC or stay? Yeah, we're, we're OCC. Okay. Well, that, that helps a whole lot on yeah. the, the multi licensing and all that on the lending side. Yeah. Good, yeah. Good. Final thoughts, man. Anything you want? What else on yeah. your mind? Well, I think, I think I'll actually just kind of dovetail on what you said. So, you know, I brought, I was brought in and I just spent the first couple of months just meeting people like you all, meeting people from iBad, meeting other bankers and stuff like that. So, hey, I just want to say thank you guys for all that you guys have done to help pave the path, make my life easier, make my job easier, but also set the, set the path for us and other community banks. I want to thank iBat for, you know, all that they do and are regularly involved in. Um, but then also I want to extend that out because again, I learned so much through talking with other people and that, that if you guys have other banks or other people watching this, that they want to, they want to reach out and contact that. That's how I got started jumping into this. So I want to extend that on. It's where you tee it up and hit it off the tee. That's what that's it is. It. <laughs> bankers helping bankers. There you go. Yeah. Right. Like, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you. we, we appreciate the hell out of you and thanks for joining us and, Gosh, I, I'll tell you guys, I've been looking forward to this. And, uh, me too, man. Didn't disappoint me. This was a great I yeah. texted him before we got on. I'm like, this is going to be so nervous. Sure, I don't <laughs> we were kidding around about it. But <laughs> this is really what it's all about is, is getting on and giving back and sharing with everybody else and absolutely buying some of these things. Yeah. And I can't tell you, you'll never know, and I'll never know, how many bankers you actually helped today. Awesome. Let's go bird hunting. All right, all right let's do it. <laughs> See you.